advisory board session for school year 2020. Uh, my name is Elvio Ferrer, I'm the interim superintendent principal. I'm going to take a few minutes just to introduce the administrators and staff members that are here. Mr. Andrew Rubello, my assistant superintendent of student affairs. Dr. Katie Warren, assistant, uh, assistant principal, I'm sorry, of uh, academic affairs. Mrs. Maria Torres, Assistant Principal of Technical Affairs. Ms. Debbie Pacheco, Director of Special Education. Ms. Lois Miller, Director of Guidance and Admissions. Mrs. Deborah Kenny, School Business. Mr. Don DiBiazio from our school committee, our school committee representing Somerset. Not sure if he's here at this point, but Director of Cooperative Education, Mr. Kevin Lazaro as well as the uh, executive assistant to myself and the school committee, Ms. Lucy Thompson. So we are going to start this evening just with a few updates. If you've read or had the opportunity to have read several articles that have come out over the past several months regarding vocational education, uh, you will understand the true benefits of what we do on a regular basis. The newest article that came out was from former Governor Bill Weld in the Boston Globe, and it regarded the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and their current reports showing that vocational programs are up 200% in requests over the past five years. That's both from technical and academic high schools. So if you look at the requests the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is receiving from public schools, both again technical, like uh, Diamond Regional, and from comprehensive schools, the requests to start new or add on to technical and Chapter 74 programs is up 200% over the past five years. You should also understand that that is a national trend that goes all the way back to 2016 when the presidential campaigns were ongoing and we had uh, several folks here for the Democratic Party. The reasoning for that is vast and numerous. Upon completing vocational programs, students not only are able to embark on a professional or an academic career, but they're also allowed to continue immediately to pursue apprenticeships, specialized college programs, and other professional routes. So with these diverse skills that these students acquire, vocational program students are able to gain unique benefits as they work through their technical skills. These benefits include hands-on learning experiences, training from licensed staff, program-specific experiences and knowledge, safety support and remedial interventions and training, career guidance, placement support, and career exploration, academic and vocational assessments, a high school diploma as well as proficiency and certificates such as OSHA, CNA, Radiology, CAD, EPA, Microsoft, and QuickBooks, just to name a few. They're also entitled to cooperative education opportunities, internships, job shadows, and apprenticeships that allow them real-life applications while they are studying at the high school level. So based on a lot of that information, a clear example in our local area has to do with offshore wind power. I'm sure many of you are aware in April of 2019, a company called Vineyard Wind was awarded a contract to supply the Commonwealth with 800 megawatts of power through the utility system at a price of 8.9 cents per kilowatt of hours. They're also going to spend $15 million over the next several years for a battery system for storage. The company plans to install 84 turbines with the power line running between Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket all the way to Centerville, Massachusetts, where it will tie in to the state's grid. Massachusetts utility programs such as Eversource, National Grid, and Unitel are seeking proposals from other programs and developers as we speak and they're looking for a 15 to 20 year program that will provide at least 400 megawatts of offshore wind power. So this one industry 
will directly and indirectly come in contact with most of our 18 programs here at Diamond Region. And again, with a life window of 20 years, this is potentially a career for many of our students. By 2035, the Commonwealth expects that 20% of its electricity is going to come from wind. When you look at national statistics dealing with professionals involved in these areas, and these are just a few, the national average of a plumber is 58, an HVAC technician 54, an electrician 45, and a welder 56. So technical education has never been as important as it is right now. And in fact, again, in 2016, it was pushed by the presidential campaign and it is likely to be revisited in 2020. At the district level, I do want to let folks know that our evening school program and numbers are again high. We are working with the electricity program and our HVAC program running full sessions at this time. And we are also working with the Workforce Investment Board on the carpentry program that is taking place in the evening. Our LPN program is also holding strong with its curriculum enrollment and accreditation. They are going to be doing a Board of Registered Nurse review this upcoming year. And our continuing education program through the high school is also flourishing, as I hope many of you have read about and heard about, with our BCC CAP program with UMass Dartmouth, and also our new entry with BCC and the early college program that the state is rolling out. We will actually be in communications with BCC on Monday to finish our early college application partnership with them, allowing students to take up to 12 free college credits while they're still in high school. I do want to speak briefly about our MCAS scores. Hopefully this will work. If not, you'll just have to trust me. Can I get some technical assistance, please? Ah, just kidding. <laughs> so as hopefully many of you read in the Herald News and the local area papers, our MCAS scores have become public. Uh, in 2019, our spring scores were again very strong. We did have several hurdles that we had to overcome. There was a new testing format for math and English. Everything was computer-based for the first time that our current juniors, last year's sophomores, were taking the test. We also had a new six-period day schedule that was introduced. And while all these things were barriers, we did continue to perform well when you look at our local competition. This is not in any way an attempt to bash anybody, but instead to promote what Diamond Regional continues to do. If you look at uh, the seven communities, Somerset, Fall River, Westport, and Swansea, our numbers are as good, if not better. When you look at the charter schools, again, you can see how we rate in regards to their completion of the MCAS English and Math test. Again, all of this is critically too important that we have a two-week on, two-week off system with vocational education, so our academic time is only 90 days a year compared to comprehensive high schools that have 180 days a year. So I'm very proud of what happens throughout the four grade levels at the school, both on the academic and the technical side. But for accountability and how the state reports out a lot of its findings to Great Fall River and Diamond Regional, it's incredibly important to understand the hard work that goes into the student side, but also to the faculty and the administrative side to make these numbers happen. As far as enrollment, this grid gives you a decent idea of what the next few years look like at Diamond Region. These come directly from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education as our October 1 numbers. So as of 2018, our total enrollment was 1,397. Last year, our October, number one, October 1 numbers gave us 1412. Currently, we are at 1433, that's our October 1 numbers for this year. And projecting out that 2% growth, you can see what will happen in 2021, 22, and 23 if we stay with our current situation. 
As most of you are fully aware, um, the current building and the current campus is generally made to hold 1,000 to 1,200 students. With our 1433, we have beyond reached capacity and uh, we have been extremely creative with the ways that we deliver education. Um, to that end, knowing what potentially is going to come down the next two or three years, we have started discussions with the school committee to look at what we're calling a campus redesign. This is not the MSBA process. This is not the MSBA process. That's the next slide. This is simply our way of trying to keep up with our enrollment situation and the expansion of programs that are forcing us to move in a specific direction. Uh, we no longer have enough classroom space to support our technical and academic programs. And as many of you uh, can see as you walk through the hallways, we have spent the past several years expanding technical programs with uh, programming in web and medical assisting. As those programs grow and have grown, they have taken up academic classes in an effort to support the technical side. Uh, that has forced us to do different things, including moving career readiness in our computer lab to the D-Wing, uh, but knowing that potentially there will be another 30 students in our hallways and classrooms next year, 60 if you roll it out two years, uh, we have to do something that is going to allow for growth. And again, this is not a new diamond regional. This is simply working within our current confines. We have developed four options that we are exploring. Uh, they mainly focus around the concept of either the licensed practical nurse program or the district office, which is the business office and the superintendent's office, moving out of this building or off of this campus. That will allow us to take over office space and conference room space to create some academic or technical areas where our programs can continue to grow. Um, we are up against the, the time. We know our window is approximately six months if we're going to be realistic. So for all of this to take place, a domino has to fall by Christmas. So the plan currently is to be working on a solution that allows us to do something by Thanksgiving Christmas so we can start renovating this building on the first floor in the A-Wing, allowing us to do what is necessary moving forward for the start of the 2021 school year. I know that's 365 days from now, but anyone who's done construction, if you don't start early, you quickly fall behind because of all the unknowns. So our timetable is very tight, it's very aggressive. Uh, we're continuing to do that research as we reconfigure three um, administrative and conference room spaces into three academic and technical classrooms as we feel is most appropriate for the master schedule moving forward. I would gladly take any questions around any of these topics uh, when we finish, if you have any. The last big piece before the administrators discuss is our MSBA project. So just to keep everybody up to speed, um, we are in Module 2, which has to do with feasibility, the ability of Diamond Regional uh, and Greater Fall River to support a new project, whatever project that might be deemed as we go through the process. So we are currently selecting a project manager that will work with us to find a designer and a contractor to do whatever work is deemed appropriate by the MSBA and, and Greater Fall River moving forward. We are negotiating a contract, an initial contract with that company and we hope to have that done by next week. Again, it's an aggressive timeline, but it's set by the MSBA as their next meeting is November 4, and they would like all of our documentation by October 9. So next week sometime, we'll be sending our documentation up to the MSBA for their review and approval. If everything goes according to plan on November 4, we will be in Boston at the MSBA building where they will approve our OPM situation and our contract and allow us to move into module three which will allow us to select a designer, an architect, and a contractor. That phase will take approximately 270-ish days um, with the anticipated public meetings to begin 
in the spring of 2020 and votes to follow more likely than not 2021. MSBA has told us that they're investigating all three options for our current project, which is the rehabilitation of this current building, a renovation and addition process, or a new build. So those are the three options that we will be looking towards as we move through the process. And again, we will be doing an enrollment study that will currently accept 1,450, which is approximately where we are now, a maximum total of approximately 1,640, and something in between. So those are the three options that we're looking at as we go through this process. Mrs. Torres would like to say a few words on the technical side. Thank you, Dr. Fur. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here this evening. I know it's difficult after a long day's work to come in here and listen to all of this and be part of this, but you are a huge part um, of what we do here and your recommendations are taken seriously and followed and carried out as best as we can given the confines of our finances uh, in our building. So with that said, uh, as we move through the MSBA process, department heads over the last year and a half have heard from me uh, to talk to their, their programs and discuss what they would like their programs to look like, what they would like their physical space to look like. So tonight, um, I ask you as an advisory board to have those conversations with the, um, with the teachers in those vocational programs and realistically, um, you know, we all want the biggest and best space. Uh, fact of the matter is, is that we can't all have, you know, what we want pie in the sky. Uh, but to have two plans, you know, ideally, what would you like to see the program that you're the advisor for look like? Um, how do you want to see it move forward? What types of things do you want to see happening in there? Um, if you are one of the medical programs, you've heard me say at nauseum that I would love to have, you know, a working dental clinic here where we can provide services for our students, cutting down on absenteeism, um, potentially having a medical uh, walk-in clinic here, operate out of our center that could uh, have our students getting their clinical experiences and also keeping our students in here when they're coming back and not having to have parents pay co-pays where they can be serviced here for their uh, return back to school visits. So take a look at your programs, maybe with a different eye, speak to the teachers, and see what kinds of things would you like to have happen in your shops and in your programs, and what does that mean for physical space and machinery and equipment and, and how things are laid out, maybe thinking a little bit out of the box. So I thank you very much, and at this time I'll turn the mic over to Dr. Warren. Good evening. Good evening. So as you just heard Dr. Furr say, we are tremendously excited about our accountability ranking. Ranking better than 60% of the schools in the state of Massachusetts is certainly exciting stuff. But I need to be very clear in saying that this is not just an academic success. This is a whole school success. At Diamond, we truly believe that our successes as far as accountability goes are due to our applied academics are due to the ways in which our students learn concepts within their academic courses and take them into the vocational programs and apply those concepts in a real life setting and vice versa. So I thank you all for being here tonight because the things that you'll discuss in your advisory boards help set the stage for success like this to continue. It's in meeting with members of the community, members from the workforce, members on our advisory board that we're able to develop units and lessons that work on both the academic and vocational side. Your work here tonight is incredibly important and so we truly do appreciate you being here. If you have any questions about what it is that you have to do tonight, the task ahead of you, please don't hesitate to reach out, whether it's tonight or if something comes up in the future. We value your time um, for everybody here educators and our advisors. And I wish you all a wonderful evening. Thank you, Dr. Warren. Mr. Rebello? Good evening. <coughs> that sure is must have been pretty good. We sound a little sleepy. Great job calling in. Good evening. Good evening. I thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, great turnout. Ton of people here. 
It, uh, it shows me something. It shows that the people in this room care about the next generation. They care about kids. They care about where the world's going. And I think Diamond is on that same play, playing field. We have the same values. And that's why I came back here. I started my career here as a guidance counselor. Then I went to Durfee High School as a vice principal. Then I went to Boston Public Schools and worked as a district administrator there in and out of 15 different high schools working with Volk Tech programs. So I have a pretty good idea of the Commonwealth and where education currently stands. And then this position opened up. Everybody was asking me, why, why are you coming back to Fall River? What you, you got an office of, you know, the views of Boston through restaurants and why are you coming back to Fall River? And it's because of the work that educators do here. It's because of all of you guiding us to where we're going next. And I have some stats for you. Because I think Diamond doesn't represent these numbers. Academically in college and in the workforce. So a study was done. College, college uh, deans, professors, they said 75% of high school students are not ready for college by the time they get there. One third of all students in college must take remedial courses, meaning they have to take classes that don't even count towards graduation. For the employers in the room, let me know if this resonates with you. Among those who employ young people right out of high school, nearly 50% said their overall preparation was deficient. I don't think Diamond produces those kids. Not at all. So beyond the numbers, and, uh, I can truly appreciate you know, that we are, our numbers are better than you know, the community and they're right up there um, in the Commonwealth too. But I don't think that's our focus every day when we come to work. Our focus is to grow good citizens, productive human beings, people that will make a generational impact. I think that's what Diamond's about. So I encourage you to continue to support Diamond, continue to work with us, continue to be an advisor for the next generation, because I really do think we do it differently. If you have any questions ever, um, you know, we're a team here. Reach out to your department heads or anyone at the administrative level. We're ready to make a generational impact in here, and we're going to continue working with you guys. Appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rill. Mr. DiBiazio, anything to share? I do want to take just a second to acknowledge the Greater Fall River Vocational School Committee Chairperson, Mr. Paul Jennings, is in the back, just arrives. Thank you for coming, Mr. Jennings. Appreciate your time. I do want to echo just one last thing from the administrators. Tonight uh, and moving forward, you really have two different things going on. Uh, you have to, as an advisory board, plan for what we're going to do here in the next three-ish years uh, in our current situation, in our, in our current home. But you also have to take into account a long-term vision that potentially is going to come to fruition over the next five to seven. So you're, you're really tasked with two uh, different situations. What are we going to continue to do in our current model, in our current situation, to provide the best possible uh, class of student and, and graduate? And additionally, what steps need to be taken to stretch beyond what we do right now and prepare us for 2023, 25, 27, 29, as we move potentially into an entirely new process with different dimensions, different spaces, and, and different equipment? So it's critically important the work that you're going to do in the next three to five years because it's going to go beyond our, our norm and what's been expected of you the past five to ten years. It's a new challenge. I thank you all for coming out. Uh, I expect uh, that everyone is up to that task and that challenge. Um, I look forward to reading all the reports once everything is done to really garner your ideas and present that to the school committee in November and December and make appropriate changes as is requested by the advisory board and the staff here at Diamond Regional to continue to produce active and appropriate citizens for an ever-changing world. Uh, in the last few seconds we have here, are there any questions on anything that's been presented to you this evening? Okay, hearing none, I officially will call the meeting to an end. Is there a motion and a second?
All in favor? Thank you all. Any opposed or discussion? No, thank you all very much. Enjoy the breakout sessions. Again, we appreciate your time and your efforts. Have a great night.